There are many different levels of security on a computer network, but doing this one thing can save the day for you. Hey, I'm Clint Garrett, Ace Networker, and part of security, or one of the levels of security that can be implemented on a computer network is preventing any and every device imaginable from being able to connect to a or any specific physical port or interface. Sounds great, right? So how do we set up a port in a switch or router configuration to prevent all other devices except the specific devices we want allowed from being able to or being allowed to connect or to allow only a certain list of devices to connect and prevent all others from connecting? How do we allow only certain specific devices to connect on a port or interface of a switch. The magic we're looking at on this video is called switch port port security. The short of it is this. We configure a port, or all or some ports, depending on how you want to tweak this or use it, really. We configure a port or interface to only allow certain MAC addresses to connect. Anything else connects to that port, and it's not on the list of allowed MAC addresses. The port then shuts down, or it doesn't allow connection, from anything until it's corrected or it's reset or it just drops the packets and frames from all devices except the one with the approved MAC address so they're just not allowed to connect period if you're new to networking you might be saying wow I didn't even know this was a feature why wouldn't you do this on all interfaces or ports well the short answer is this it's called switch port port security it's important to use and implement but it needs to be determined on a case by case or really a port by port basis. Switch port port security can single handedly be one of the best security implementations you can utilize on computer networking devices, but it can also cause a lot of unintended havoc on a network if it's not configured and forgotten about. And say someone tries to connect devices to a port, like say in an emergency for immediate connectivity on the network, and the port shuts down or it doesn't allow you to connect to that port because. This new device that you connected has a MAC address that doesn't match the allowed MAC or MACs on the list. I'm going to, once again, show you some of the basic commands used in a command line interface on a Cisco switch to configure switch port port security on a single interface. And this is to show you basically how port security works and can be used. If you're using command line interface, you would enter configuration mode. Then you would enter the configuration for the specific port or interface that you wanted to put port security on. For a Cisco switch, you would enter interface followed by whatever interface number you want to configure, and then you would hit enter. Then you would type switch port port security like this to activate port security on this interface. So for this example and this switch, let's say you wanted to activate port security on interface GE2, Gigabit Ethernet 2. You would enter configuration mode, then type interface GE2 to enter the configuration for interface GE2. To activate switch port port security, you would enter switch port port dash security and hit enter inside this interface configuration mode. Now again, this can be industry specific and brand or model specific, but on Cisco switches, you can authorize multiple MAC addresses that are allowed to connect on this interface or port, or if you don't authorize a specific number of MAC addresses that will be allowed to connect on this port, it will usually default to only allowing one MAC address. For this example, I'm going to allow four MAC addresses to be authorized on this GE2 port or interface. On a Cisco switch, I would enter switch port, port security, maximum, followed by whatever number I wanted. So in this case, I wanted four. I decided I wanted four devices to connect to this GE2 interface. So I'll enter switch port port security maximum four. So this is saying I'm going to allow four MAC addresses to connect on this interface, but not any others. Or I won't recognize, I'll drop packets or frames from the others that I don't recognize. I'll give you an example scenario. I once worked in a building that looked very similar to the back rooms that you've seen on the internet. Although there was no wild mechanized demonic robot thing coming after us, we did have a manager checking in on us, so I guess that could be in some ways considered the same thing. But again, that's a story for another day. There were cubicles set up and they were all connected via ethernet cables into a patch panel that went into a local layer to switch. This area was originally an area where only certain individuals worked with desktop computers 
that seldom have ever moved. They were, those people were moved to another area or another building, but this area was then designated by this Fortune 500 company that we worked for to be an area where multiple temporary connections would be made for training purposes. They would need access to a serious portion of the network when they were there, but when they left at the end of their training or their training time for that day, they took their assigned laptops with them. They intended to use this area for multiple groups to come in at different times throughout the day. Now, each cubicle was assigned to a specific person in each group, but you may have three or four people using a single cubicle connection in a given training day because of the fact that you had three or four groups coming in. So, you wanted the three to four laptops that were allowed in each specific cubicle to easily connect without any problem, but you didn't want someone else from a different cubicle or someone else, period, from another group being able to come into that cubicle, connect some random laptop to the Ethernet port in that cubicle, and just start accessing that portion of the network. This was a perfect example of setting up multiple MAC addresses for each cubicle's Ethernet port that could be allowed to connect, but it excluded all other laptops and all other devices from connecting. In other words, if one of the four allowed laptop MAC addresses was not on the list for that Ethernet port, you know, back behind the wall on the switch, they would not be allowed to connect. So that was just one scenario for the need to use switch port port security. The more you work in or on computer networks, the more different and varying scenarios you will encounter for using port security. But the purpose of us going over it here is in this short video is to give you some knowledge of it and to give you a heads up about it as yet another tool that can be used to create more precision in managing and protecting your computer network. Now, it's not used across the board either. Switch port, port security is not just randomly used across the board. Again, this may be industry or brand or model specific, but on a Cisco switch, you have several options for what the switch is supposed to do with frames and packets received on this interface from devices whose MAC addresses are not authorized. There is a protect mode, which we're going to over here first. Protect mode, whereby it will drop those packets and frames from unauthorized devices and create an entry in the syslog file, the log files on this switch that can be referenced later to see what occurred. That's done with the command switch port, port security, violation, protect. Or you can use restrict mode to handle unauthorized packets and frames. Restrict mode drops packets and frames just like protect mode does it, from any unauthorized MAC addresses connected on this interface port, but it does not create an entry in the log file. Now, maybe you want to clog up the log file on the switch, but you still want it to drop packets and frames from those unauthorized Macs on this interface. Strict mode is done with the switch port port security violation restrict command. Now, what used to be the default for switch port port security was to have this interface report just completely shut down if an unauthorized Mac address connected to it. You can still do this, but you want to consider if this drastic shutdown is necessary on this specific interface port. In many scenarios, it is absolutely necessary. And again, this is typically for security reasons. Maybe you don't want someone using Mac spoofing software to eventually determine what Mac addresses are allowed on the interface, and then them being able to spoof the correct Mac address to get in and connect on this interface port. In a situation like this, you want the port to simply shut down and no longer allow any connectivity from that point on. This leads to the next step in switch port port security. How do we determine which MAC addresses are allowed and which are not allowed? There are a couple of ways we can configure this interface to know the authorized MAC addresses and the unauthorized MAC addresses. The first is you statically or manually enter the MAC addresses you want allowed or authorized. You would do this with the switch port port security MAC address followed by the specific MAC. On this interface port, we set the maximum above to four authorized MAC addresses. So if we were to manually or statically enter the authorized MAC addresses, we would need to use this configuration line four times for each of the intended MAC addresses like this. 
Now, these are fictitious MAC addresses, but this gives you an idea. Again, if you don't, or if you didn't set the maximum above the default of one authorized MAC address, as we did above, by allowing a maximum of four, then the first MAC address you manually entered with this command would be the authorized MAC address on this interface port, and all others would be considered unauthorized. Since we set the maximum to four above, we'll manually enter the other three authorized MAC addresses in these next lines here. You may not want to manually enter the authorized MAC address or addresses on this interface port. Maybe you just want it to know that, hey, the first device connected is the authorized device, and then all others are unauthorized. If that's the case, you want to use the sticky command. You, would, you wouldn't manually enter the MAC addresses like we just did here. You would use the command switch port, port security, MAC address, sticky. This tells this interface port that the first device connected is the authorized MAC address device. All others are unauthorized. Now, if we set the maximum to four, like we did above for this GE2 interface, then the first four devices that connected to this interface would have their MAC addresses registered on this interface port, and they would be authorized, and then all others beyond that would be unauthorized. Here's yet another example of when you may want to use port security. You may have a public area with a wall jack, like, say, in an airport. You may only want pilots or staff to be allowed to connect their laptops to this wall jack interface. You either used sticky command to connect each of their laptops physically to this wall jack initially to have them registered on the switches interface, or you manually or statically entered each MAC address to have them registered in the configuration for this interface on the switch. You have plenty of signage up around this wall jack indicating this is only for pilots and staff for use. Uh, you may have lots of warnings up there, but some random traveler attempts to connect his or her laptop to this wall jack. If they do, it's set to shut down. Again, that's just a random example, but it gives you more of an idea why port security is available as a tool for use. You may have a server connected on an interface of a switch, and only a select few people are allowed to connect to the interfaces of that switch for accessing the server. You could use port security to allow only their MAC addresses to connect, but all others would be unauthorized. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever encountered issues with port security, or if you ever worked with port security on a switch or router, and what you did to resolve them. So that's the basic rundown of switch port port security. It's yet another tool in your arsenal of tools, protocols, and configurations available to really dial down how you want your network to function, how secure you want it, and how efficient you need to make it.